Hi, and welcome to module six of lecture five. In this module, we're gonna talk about the first of three rules for how to integrate. In the previous module, we discussed how to integrate simple functions, powers of x, exponentials, and logarithms. In this one, we're gonna talk about rules that are, be, that are used in order to integrate more complicated functions. This is an exact analog to what we did in the previous lecture when we discussed rules for how to differentiate more complicated functions. In this module, we're going to do the first of these rules, the most straightforward, which is the fact that the integral is a linear operator. We're going to begin by deriving that fact, so you can see how this works and how it's nothing mysterious, the same exact logic as the derivative. In fact, let's begin by actually listing the derivative's linearness, right? The fact that the derivative is linear means this. The derivative of a f of x plus b g of x is equal to a df dx plus b dg dx, but I've dropped the of x to make my life a little easier writing things down. Okay, so this is the definition of a linear operator in terms of derivative. This means the derivative is linear. I forgot parentheses. Um, what about the integral? Well, to figure that out, we'd have to make a little end run around this using this fact. Let's start by writing this expression. We're going to represent this in two ways. First, both of which use the definition of the antiderivative. Okay, so first, we know that the integral, this is the same thing as the integral of a derivative of ay plus bz dx. Right, because the, 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 the antiderivative is the inverse of the derivative. So it gets the function back again. So here we have this, and we're gonna ignore the constant of integration for now. So here we have this. Um, that's one way of writing it. Now, what's this? Well, this is a derivative. We can use the fact that this is linear to split this up into a dy over dx plus b dz over dx. So all I've done here is make use of the fact that the derivative is linear. So this is one way of writing that expression. Second way is to individually use the antiderivatives of these things. So this is also equal to a times the integral of the derivative of y with respect to x dx plus b times the derivative of z, respect to x, dx. So now instead of the, you know, the whole thing at once, we do it together. And now you see we're done. This thing equals this thing. So we see if we have a combination of things, then you can split them apart. Now you might be saying, well, this is the derivatives in there. This isn't a combination of functions. But note that dy dx and dz dx are just functions. The derivatives of other functions, they're functions themselves. We can call them whatever we want to call them. So let's define f equals dy dx, and let's define g as dz dx. Okay. Well, putting together, you get this. The first one over here yields a f plus b bg, so it's the integral of the whole combination, and that equals a, the integral of f dx, plus b times the integral of g dx. And this, if you compare it to here, is the exact same expression of linearity. So, using the fact that the derivative is linear, we're able to show that its inverse operator, the integral, is also linear. That helps us do all the same things we could do with the derivative being linear. For instance, if we have, say, the integral of, let's say, x squared minus x plus 1, how do we deal with this? Well, we know the rule for each separate part. So this equals the integral of x squared minus the integral of x plus the integral of 1 
How do we do that? Let's rewrite one as x to the zero. We can use all the rules. We just went, the power rule we went over, which was that the integral of x to the n dx is gonna equal one over n plus one, x to the n plus one. That was from the previous module. So we get one third x to the third minus one half x squared plus x plus c. Now you might say, well, why is there only one c? It doesn't matter, it's a constant. So you can put as many c's as you want or just shove them all together into one c. It makes no difference. Just don't forget the c. So that's it. So we did, any poly so we did that polynomial. We can do any polynomial. So for instance, um, we can also do any more complicated function that's some sum or difference of simpler functions. So x cubed minus x to the two thirds plus e to the x. How about that one? How about two e to the x? Well, that's gonna equal one quarter x to the fourth from the first term minus, let's see, now two thirds plus one is five thirds. One over five thirds is three fifths. So this is minus three fifths x to the five thirds. I'm going pretty fast here. Um, part of the benefit of having this in tape is you can pause it. And if you're not sure about a piece, stop it, do it up by hand, make sure you get it, and then start the video again. <laughs> Plus two u the x. So again, you can do any com any sum or difference of any um, pon any powers of x or any exponentials or any logarithms for that matter by using the fact that the integral is a linear operator and then splitting it up into pieces and integrating each one separately. So, so far, this is going pretty well, I think, right? We have some basic rules. They're not much more complicated than the rules for differentiation, except for n equals negative one, special case. And the linearity allows us to do the same splitting up that we did for a derivative. So that's pretty good. In the next two modules, we're gonna do two other rules that are a little less easy to deal with like this, but we'll see how we can make them work for us and use them to simplify integrals and actually solve them. Thank you very much.